Je vous remercie, Excellence, and uh, now I invite His Excellency Tarman Chanmugaratnam, Senior Minister and Coordinating Minister for Social Policies of Singapore, Co-Chair of Interactive Dialogue 5, on Water Action Decade, accelerating the implementation of the objectives of the, including the uh, United Nations Secretary General's Plan, Water Action Decade 2018-2022, to present a summary of the dialogue, please. Mr. President, Vice President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates and participants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking on behalf of Singapore and the U.S. The U.S. was represented by my co-chair, Excellency Monica Medina, Assistant Secretary for Oceans, International Environment and Scientific Affairs at the Department of States of the United States. I thank our moderator, Mr. Tong Yu Chu, Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, our fellow panelists, our discussants, and the many participants from the floor who contributed to the discussion at Interactive Dialogue 5. The broadest points of convergence in our discussions uh, are clear. First, the water crisis that we face is both local and global. It manifests itself locally and most severely in water stress regions, but we will not be able to solve local water crises without addressing the problems globally. We have to treat water and the global water cycle in particular as a global common good to be protected collectively and in the interests of all. In the interests of all. The science and evidence tells us that the global water cycle is a global common good. We are interconnected between nations in ways more profound than we previously recognize. The global water cycle itself is out of balance for the first time in human history. And the global water cycle and the water crisis is now interacting with the climate crisis and the loss of biodiversity in ways that exacerbates all three. We must treat the global water cycle as a global common good. But there's a further reason why we have to do so. And that is that water is critical, not just to achieving SDG 6, it, which itself is a tragedy that's carrying on before us, the failure to achieve SDG 6. But it's also critical to achieving all the SDGs, most critically food security, gender equality, ending poverty and inequalities, and achieving peace within and across boundaries. Second broad conclusion that comes came out very clearly from our interactive dialogue is the fact that we must value water right as a precondition for all that we're trying to achieve, to achieve sustainable and equitable water. Pricing water closer to its true value is critical. And we have to recognize that pricing is critical not just to make radical improvements in the efficiency of use of water, but also to achieving equity. Because pricing together with appropriate targeted subsidies for the poor and vulnerable communities is necessary for equity and inclusion. And now I, sh I present the conclusions of our Interactive Dialogue 5 with regard to the institutional processes and mechanisms that are necessary to achieve momentum coming out of this conference. First, there was broad endorsement of the following recommendations for mechanisms within the UN system to strengthen the governance of water. The appointment of a US, UN Special Envoy for Water to ensure that water remains high on the political agenda within and outside the UN. The empowering of UN water and the strengthening of coordination within the UN system the convening of a time-bound task force of member states to work with and support the UN Special Envoy, and the establishment of a mechanism to collect data systematically, data on water in all its critical dimensions, to be able to share it and enable the monitoring and analysis of the data that is necessary to support policy making locally, nationally, and globally. That's the first set of proposals, the mechanisms required in the UN system to achieve momentum coming out of this conference. Second, we must also support the broader evolution of multilateral financial institutions. 
especially the World Bank and the MDBs, so that we can mobilize capital for water action and better support member states in achieving water resilience. We have to bring together every stream of finance, public and private, to lower the cost of capital for investments in the developing world. Third, we need to incentivize joint action through multi-stakeholder coalitions, local communities, indigenous people, civil society organizations, governments at the local and national level, and international organizations, so that we provide the best and tailored support for local solutions, so that we spread best practices, and so that we bring down the costs of innovations required to solve water, water problems. These multi-stakeholder coalitions are also necessary and potentially very powerful in developing capacity and skills on the ground, developing whole cadres of professionals and skilled people, those working at the front lines of water conservation. Fourth, we must convene more regular global meetings to sustain the momentum of water-related actions and to ensure accountability for progress coming out of this conference, including a third UN water conference before 2028. And to bring coherence to these various institutional initiatives and mechanisms, we call on the UN Secretary General to formulate a plan of action on water and to ensure the integration of water into other intergovernmental processes, particularly related to climate, biodiversity, food security, energy, and particularly to ensure that water retains its centrality in the outcomes of the SDG summit and water helps shape a new and more effective multilateralism as will be discussed at the summit of the future next year. Water is a solvable problem that came out very clearly from Interactive Dialogue 5 and we can turn this water crisis into a global opportunity. Thank you.